Hi, welcome to Snakecast. I'm joined by Chris. Hello. <clears throat> uh, today's subject is the DC Cinematic Universe. Yeah. How um, to fix it? Yeah, because how to fix it? Well, because does it need fixing? Uh, well, I don't think it had a strong start. I mean, I think it, cause it's got time to fix itself. I mean, you think about it. Uh, I know Marvel Studios had Iron Man first, but it did have an Incredible Hulk afterwards. Now, I won't say Incredible Hulk was the most memorable. Marvel film, and he had Iron Man 2, which it wasn't awful, but also wasn't brilliant either, was it? Even as someone who liked Iron Man 2, I can't really think of that many things that I think are great about it. Mm. So we should. Uh, the first film was Man of Steel. Uh, which. What do you think of Man of Steel? Man of Steel was okay. Um, there were some bits I like about it. I gotta admit, I do like. Um, the uh, oh, come on, think. I do like the um, the scenes where Clark was a younger child. I thought there were scenes, and um, because you had Kevin Costner in it, didn't you? Mm. I thought because he was really good in that film. I liked that I kind of father and son um, scenes they had together. I thought there was problem because it was him. Uh, being an outcast, wasn't he, because of his powers, and him seeing a freak at school, I thought those were really strong scenes, because that's what I really liked about the character of Superman. It was more about him uh, trying to be able to fit in on Earth originally, mm. before he got used to it and found his own identity. Um, I thought uh, the bit where it started to dip was funny enough when the action started to kick in, when it started becoming a Dragon Ball Z film. <laughs> you know it I mean, definitely was you? the best Dragon Ball Z film. Yeah, yeah but at the same time I thought, well, this, so far you've done all this character work, and then this happens. Um, I thought the chemistry between Henry Cavill and um, Amy Adams <laughs> was off. I didn't think for a second that they were in love or that, that you know, they had any chemistry. Uh, hello, they shared a bath together. I was in the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> they still share it. <laughs> we're in love. Look, we're in the bath together. <laughs> this is what couples do. They take baths together. But so it was, yeah. I thought Man of Steel was okay. It wasn't the strongest start. But back then, they didn't even think about doing a DC Universe, did they? They mm. thought it was just going to be a Superman franchise. But then they said, right, okay. It didn't, because it didn't do as well as they thought. And that's why they said, right, we're going to bring Batman in. And I think <laughs> it's like, it's like say to Warner Brothers, look, you know, you do realise you've got other characters besides Batman that you could use. <laughs> Going back to Man of Steel, I did feel like I really like that interpretation of Superman. That's probably my favourite interpretation of him, in that, like, in so many scenes, he feels so calm. Someone with that amount of power. My favourite scene is when he's in the interrogation room, and he's, like, he's got the handcuffs on, and then he just stands up and just moves his arms apart. He doesn't make a big motion. He stands up and talks to them directly, and he's like, Okay, I'm trying to cooperate with you, but we're running out of time here, so if you don't mind, I'm going to move this along. <laughs> and it's a display of power without making a big show of force, yeah. if that makes sense. And he's a very interesting character. I like that uh, the whole thing at the end of it is that he killed Zod. And it kind of hit me that that's how you hurt Superman. That you get him to... You attack his ideals. Like, put him in a position where he has to kill. Well, because, yeah, because in a way, that's Zod winning, isn't it? Because, mm. you know, because he, you know, he's made Superman do what he would not do. Yeah. I think I, I think it was Bernie Burns from Rooster Teeth who said that Superman only has to lose once. Like, if he loses, the world is destroyed. Like it, it, it does annoy me when people like criticize him for like punching Zod through buildings and shit. It's like, okay, maybe next time he'll let the madman destroy the world. Wait, no, but also with that is think about it, yeah. Um, with that, yeah, because he's still getting used to his powers, isn't he? Mm. I mean, but also when you know, because you know, when when there's someone that you want, you really want to. Defeat. Mm. I think it'd be like it was like he was forgetting about people around him. Yeah. Also, that was like, but well, the thing is, though, that was a good way to follow up one of the many subplots in Batman vs Superman, mm. where they acknowledge that, saying, "No, he, he he destroyed half the city. How can we say that he's a hero? And you know, why why can't we put him to custody? Custody. 
I don't know, maybe you could have, you know, negotiated with the man who said under no uncertain terms, I'm going to kill you and everyone on this planet. I don't know. Also, he does try and, like, the, the scenes where he's trying to get the fight away, but they pull him back because, yeah. surprise, surprise, he's not the strongest man in the room. Everyone else is not only stronger than him, but they have more fighting experience. He didn't even say it. He's a farm boy. I'm a soldier. She brought her new ones about versus Superman. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Uh, so yeah, then uh, about three years later, Batman vs Superman came out, and it did follow the story about Superman destroying, half, being responsible for destroying half the city. Uh, but then that leads also because you find out that Bruce Wayne uh, had connections to people who were killed in that event. One of them, who could have easily got out of the building, he just stood there and watched. He was just like, but it's so cool. <laughs> this is what Track of Evolution could have been like, they just said. <laughs> but yeah, they had, um, so that would be an, uh, so, yeah, we, uh, you knew him this a couple of years ago when they announced Ben Affleck was Batman. Mm. And the internet, they, they reacted in a calm, mature way, didn't they? It was the greatest crime since Michael Keaton was cast as Batman. Which, in of itself, was the greatest crime since Heath Ledger was cast as the Joker. Um, <laughs> two casting, which people fought against, two for nail, and ruined their respective franchises. Because I really do like Ben Affleck as Batman. I think he's really good. For both, yeah. both for Batman and Bruce Wayne. He's a fantastic portrayal of the character because it's a side we haven't seen before, and that yes. is a Batman after the death of Jason Todd. Because yeah. we've always seen him at the oh, beginning, haven't we? And this is like, it's like, it's like this is like the Dark Knight Returns, yeah. Bruce Wayne. Yeah. What the, we only get like one example of Batman looking after a sidekick and having the Bat Family present, and that was Batman and Robin. <laughs> and the less we say about that film, the better. Um, but like, uh, also what I like is because you see Bruce Wayne when he's younger, he's a charmer, isn't he? Mm. He acts as a playboy, isn't he? But there's one scene where um, Bruce is trying to um, investigate it at this party that Lex Luthor is throwing, uh, uh, but he gets caught by someone, by a, a woman, and he's trying to be, you know, charming. He goes, "Oh, nice, nice shoes, by the way." We can tell he's finding it difficult. The charmer, I think, yeah, that's inside of an mm. old Bruce Wayne who's who's not as charming as he used to be because he's <laughs> older now. I also love that we finally have a film that acknowledges that Batman's kind of a dick. Because he is a dick! He's, yeah, he is, yeah! <laughs> uh, yeah there was oh. this controversy about Batman killing. Because uh, he... It was fine when Keaton did it. Yeah. <laughs> but just... Maybe if Tim Burton directed this one, would be fine. But I, I think I think in this one, I think it's because of the rage he has. Mm. Like, even, even Alfred says something similar to that, doesn't he? Yeah. How it turns good men cruel. And because of you know, the old past of the Joker and what happened to Jason Todd, I think that's what's caused him to be like that. Mm. But I think now we've got Justice League, I think he's going to fight more yeah. fairly and we're going to see a development in his character. Uh, it, Bat it gives him something to work off. And um, there is, I feel like, um, there is a very, something very important. There's a difference between a character who is willing to kill and a character who kills. So you have like the scene where he has the Batwing outside of a window. We know this thing has machine guns and rockets. Imagine the Punisher driving that thing. He would have just shot it in the window. Oh, yeah, awesome. But this Batman jumps out and fights them hand to hand. And that's the difference. Is that you know he? I I prefer it when he, Batman doesn't kill because there's that whole scene in The Dark Knight where he's taken out a building full of. Um, terrorists who have disguised the hostages as terrorists and he's taken out an entire SWAT team and it's all like with his ingenuity that's a lot more impressive than watching him kill a bunch of people but at the same time it works for this character because they made like a much darker Batman yeah I gotta say as well I do like the combat scenes of him mm. and people it reminds me a lot of the Arkham games yeah I definitely get that it's kind of like that feeling of impact and the flow of it. Yes. Say what you will about Dark Knight. He does good fight scenes. He does, and he's good at visual stuff as well. Mm. Like uh, I think he did a lot of music videos before. Um, yeah, he did music videos before he did um, films, and you can tell because he has good visual. He has good eye for visuals and all that. Mm. Um, 
with Batman vs Superman, my whole opinion of it is, it is a big mess. Mm. It, it, you know, there are too many sub subplots crammed in. It's trying to set up too many things. It is an absolute mess. It doesn't know what tone it wants to have as well. I think halfway through the tone just changed completely. Uh, but I still like some of it. You know, like Ben Affleck's great. Gal Gadot is great as uh, Wonder Woman. It's a great. I thought it was a good way to introduce her and ready mm. for the Wonder Woman film. Uh, I'm going to say this now, I was completely wrong about Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. I thought he'd make a great Lex Luthor, but yeah. Well, he felt like he was playing the Joker. But well, no, you know what the funny thing is? If I felt he was playing a Riddler. And the funny thing is, the Riddler apparently was going to be the original villain. He didn't... The, the Riddler would have acted more superior. Like, this guy's like more like over-the-top anarchy. Uh, I feel like the Riddler would have, like, rubbed it in that he'd outsmarted them a lot more. Even yeah. Jim Carrey's one got that down. Well, he, he, it, this reminded me of Jim Carrey's Riddler, though. And mm. he, he, I thought, I just thought, I wanted him to play it more like how he played Mark Zuckerberg in um, Social Network. Yeah. You know, the whole arrogant side. Because you know, cause when he plays him in Social Network, he has that cold, when he just stares at someone, he has that really cold uh, stare. And it's a bit of an unpleasant, uh, unpleasant stare. I thought he should, that's how he should play Lex Luthor. Mm. There's that one tiny scene in Batman vs Superman where he gets his head sh uh, hair shaved, and he's had that look. look he had. And I thought, well, that's Lex. That's it. Yeah. Then he went to mm, the bells are coming. The bells are ringing. Ding, 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 ding. I thought, right, okay, this is stupid. <laughs> it's just, I thought, so I don't know what they're gonna do next for Lex Luthor, but I hope they do improve. I was thinking of who should be a Riddler. Just going slightly off topic. Uh, Seth Green as Riddler. Uh, yeah, I can see It's like, that. he's got that right hair colour, he's got kind of like, a very slight frame. I would go with Neil Patrick Harris. Yes. I mean, he could definitely get like, I feel like the best interpretation of the Riddler is like, when he acts like he's the smartest person in the room, like the animated series or the Arkham games. And he gets frustrated when someone else wants him. Yeah. I think that's why like, just like, I think that's what makes him my favourite character, just like that unrepentant ego. Yeah. I mean, I love, I love Jim Carrey to death. That wasn't uh, my best, uh, my favourite. He was to play the 1960s. Uh, yeah. Uh, he was closer to that than um, Tommy Lee Jones was to <laughs> Two Face, though. <laughs> my other favourite character who <laughs> kind of butchered. Um, anyway, we should move on to the third film Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad, yes. This one felt kind of like... The other films felt they were trying to be very dark. This one had a very different tone. And well, it did that, it originally. It gave me a bit more hope for it. Did it, did it originally, though, have a, a, a less dark tone? I doubt it. Yeah. Uh, Suicide Squad had some uh, uh, reshoots. I don't know how major they were. But Source was saying they want to add they they want to add some more comedy into it. I think that's because because of Deadpool, mm. and I thought oh, when people love Deadpool, maybe we should go for more because because Deadpool was gritty as well. Yeah, uh, I thought oh, Deadpool had humor. We need to have some humor because of chart shows. <laughs> that uh, yeah. I mean, like a gritty, violent film about villains being villains, I don't think would work as well. Yeah, I thought yeah because yeah, I mean Suicide so Squad, no doubt, it did have some funny moments in it. But I thought just the the tone of it all and the editing was just a bit mm. off. Like I mean, it went from being funny to really serious and funny to be. It went all. I thought that's that's the this is the problem with reshoots. If you're gonna reshoot something, you gotta think about how these new shots or new takes are gonna fit in with the whole film. Mm. Marvel do a lot of reshoots. Captain America: Civil War had reshoots, but they always intended that to happen. They knew what they were gonna do for these reshoots, uh, but. When you do shoot three shoots where you change a tone for a film, that's where it's not going to work as well. I actually felt like it worked pretty well. Something about it kind of felt like it felt like a very old school action film, like something from the '80s, where it kind of like had that kind of goofy sense of tone. Yeah. But it had like good character moments as well. Like the stuff with the character Diablo was really well done, and there wasn't a lot of focus on Marg of uh, Harley Quinn. Who, if you don't know, Harley Quinn is um, essentially the Joker's emotional hostage. And we get like a subtle glimpse at the tragedy of their relationship. 
where like she's looking over the edge, she's like remember remembering like at times they had to get and she's looking back and she's crying. I can't remember what she asked Deadshot after that. But it like it you can't you got it without it having to be the whole arc of a character. Yeah, I guess it Margaret quickly Mark Robbie was great as Harley Quinn. Oh, I think that's one of the strengths of the Suicide Squad that she was really good. Uh Will Smith was good as Dead Deadshot mm. as well. Um I like Deadshot's backstory. Yeah. Yeah. And they there's one cool scene where Batman's involved and that was yeah, There awesome. was two good scenes with Batman. Like the best Batman scenes there was those that, that was like he drops down behind Deadshot and it's snowing and he just rises up and that was the moment when I I completely bought Ben Affleck as Batman. Yeah, you thought that's Batman, that is Batman right there. That's like something out of the animated series. Uh, one thing I'll say very quickly as well, the soundtrack, because I know, cause I think because they knew, like, you know, because Guardians of Galaxy yeah, is a great soundtrack. <sighs> I thought it was like, right, we need to have this song, and then this song, and, and, and this one, and yeah. we'll, we'll forget about the songs completely until the end or something. There were good song choices, but there was like three songs all after each other. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say this, yeah. Because you had um, Sympathy for the Devil, and then you had like. Um, one by House of the Rising Sun, wasn't it? Something like that, yeah. That was the song when they go into the prison. And there was another one for Harley. Uh, that was another fitting one. But. Was it, put, was it put a spell on you? I don't know what it was on now. Right, babe. Well, yeah, we was like. Well, you know, got, I'm, I'm, you know, what we think you never do is compare a Marvel film to a DC film. You don't do that. One, mm. one thing I'm just going to say is with Guardians. Those songs were spread out. Mm. They weren't all after each other, and they were there for a good reason. While in this one, I don't know, it just felt like they were there just because. It, it definitely felt like. Well, you see this in other films, like Power Rangers did this as well, where it felt like. It felt like it had like, a, an a, like a, an interesting soundtrack, but it felt like it was there for the sake of Guards of the Galaxy made this work. So mm. if we do this, people like us. And unfortunately, you need to do it a lot, but I don't know how to turn this thing. I got it. And Suicide Squad didn't do it, but it kind of reminds you of that line from Batman Begins, why do we fall? So we can learn to pick ourselves up. And it kind of felt like DC was picking itself up with Suicide Squad. That, And there was changes, but it, it seemed like there was an understanding that the direction they understood that the direction they were going wasn't necessarily the right one. Yeah, but look at the trailer for like say, I just do, to go back to just Suicide Squad. Actually, mm. I gotta say one thing I loved was for a change, Jai Courtney. He was good as Captain Boomerang. <laughs> I don't usually like Jai Courtney. I think he's got more charisma than that chair over there. But <laughs> but, you, but I what I thought it was they didn't overdo it. Mm. With Captain Boomerang, they just like he was there in the background. There was one scene, wasn't it, where he just left? Yeah, it was like back. he was in a bar, <laughs> and like um, Rick Flags, like you're free to go. Everyone else can't stay behind, but he just like looks the side. He grabs a beer off the side and just leaves. <laughs> it's like that's what you would do in that situation. But then he's back, and they walk the walk in down the street, and he comes back, and I thought, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, it's like, nah, this will be fun. I, don't know, I, I kind of like that, like, that was kind of their reaction was like, come on, it'll be a laugh. It did feel like some parts felt very underutilized. Like, Katana felt like a late addition. Was she always supposed to be there? Because, like, it's Katana again. Is it uh, she, yeah. Yeah, she just jumps on, doesn't he? Yeah, she just, like, she? Yeah. jumps onto the plane as it's taken off. And he goes, oh, who's this? Oh, and then like, they explain to her. And she talks about you know, how, how her lover is in the sword. Hmm. But that's all, it, as far as it goes with that, isn't it? He's got a cool backstory, but nothing's done with it. Yeah. I was... It just, like, it had a great great cast of characters and made them work. But you notice uh, that the villain... He goes, if they hadn't created this team in the first place, they probably wouldn't have that hmm. villain to fight. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but I gotta say, Wonder Woman so far looks great. I really want this to work. Mainly for a feminist perspective, I just want there to be more women as superheroes. And I don't want this to fail, and then, like, 
that kind of created this black market. Oh, people don't want to see women as superheroes. Because that's not the case. And there's so few of them when I really when you really get down to it. No, oh, you, got, you got Ant Man and the Wasp coming out. So that's got yeah, to, and then you got uh, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, she's finally getting a shot. Yeah, she's finally getting a shot. Um, and hopefully, yeah, hopefully, so so we more uh, female yeah. superheroes. Because Batgirls, they're making a Batgirl film. Ooh, that'd be Josh good. Whedon writing and directing it. Hell yeah! There you go. I thought they were making uh, Birds of Prey. Uh, that's another one, Black Canary. I don't think I didn't know they're doing that one. There we go. But uh, should we get back to the point now? How we're going to fix it? Yes. Uh, I did have an idea, which I think the series could be moving towards. One. I'd be interested to see if they do this. So I don't know much about Arrowverse, but mm. they've introduced the idea of uh, the multiverse, right? Mm. In the form of the Flash. Yeah. What if? Oh, oh, uh, we just killed a snake. What if this is leading up to a uh, crisis on infinite earths? Which was a storyline where the multiverse combined into one universe. I personally think for a cinemat- sort of cinematic film, you know, for some of the cinema, I, I don't know, that might be too much. Hmm. I don't like multiverses. I just, I don't know. It just, it just, it, it's too, it's, it's too much of a head overload, mm. and it's, I don't know. I always find it's like something to please fanboys. Oh, you got this, the, you got this guy mm. and this guy together, yay! And all that. Just, it just, I don't know. It just, it's never multiverse has never appeared to appeal no. to me. Well, the original multiverse was kind of, was um, kind of created by accident because they had like. The Golden Age versions of everything on their own Earth. And then they had, like, the reinterpretations <laughs> later on, which is why they had two Supermen. One who was, like, much older. And, like, why they had two versions of the Flash. For example, he had, like, the guy with the tin helmet and the, you know, the one in the red uniform that mm. we all know. And then they had other Earths. One which is, like, the Cowboy line, the World War Two line... And there was also Earths created for characters that they'd bought from other companies. Like, originally, Captain Marvel, or Shazam, their version of Captain Marvel, was bought, and they had their own universe. But Crisis on Infinite Earths merged them into the main line. It kind of feels like, if they took that route, there's a lot of DC stories that revolve around that multiverse that you could take advantage of. There's, there's like storytelling potential that hasn't been done by Marvel. I don't think could work with Marvel potentially. But with that said, I I really I just want them to like focus on getting these solo films right. I think DC are rushing. It definitely feels like the rushing well, because because they knew that Avengers came out in 2012 mm. and they feel we need to get a Justice League film out soon. I think they're, gonna, they're fearing that if they don't do it soon, superhero films are going to be out of fashion and mm. and uh, we're going to move on. But I think, just, no, just take your time with this because it took Marvel like four years until we got to the Avengers. Mm. And we started, well, they started in 2013. So yeah, that that is like four years later. Mm. But... It's like, but they're not Marvel. Like, think about it. they had Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, uh, Iron Man Two, Thor, and Captain America. They had five films to set up the events in Avengers. Mm. Um, with 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 this one, we got one, two, three, four. Oh, four would you count Suicide Squad as a lead, a lead towards the? Uh, I would count it as a lead. No, no. So I don't think there's much. Mm. I think they're just, I don't know, I feel like they're just rushing it, but yeah. then again, though, they got, um... I mean, like, at the same time, the DC Animated Universe didn't have, like, a solo series for everybody in that. They were all introduced in Justice League. The exceptions being Batman and Superman, who had, like, um, Batman vs. Superman movie. Mm. Which is totally how the live-action one should have been done. And then everything else came from that. And it may, might have worked if they had a Batman film and a Superman film, then the Versus movie, and then Justice League after that. 
Hmm. I kind of feel like, instead of like making a new version, if they continued from the older versions of those characters, like having the um, the style of the Tim Burton films, and having that Batman because that Batman's already got a Robin. So not only could you introduce Jason Todd into that li- into that version of Batman, but you also had Nightwing there to work with. And with Superman, you had a much better Lex Luthor you could have used. <laughs> Amen to that. I just don't know how they're going to fix Lex Luthor now, because I guess they're stuck hmm. with that Lex Luthor. Well, I mean, he could be changed by prison. Yeah. I saw things in there that changed me. He can change, he can change. <laughs> how do you think a Batman movie would work? Um, the new I- one to talk about. Uh, well, okay. Actually, this is one thing I did mention: Suicide Squad. Yeah. Yeah. I hate Jared Leto's Joker. I really don't. I and I mean, I don't want there to be a Batman film with this new Joker. I think they should focus on Batman's smaller villains, the ones that don't that are not seen as much. Hmm. Um. I mean, I think Killer Croc should stay out of it. I don't like. I didn't like Killer Croc either in uh, Suicide Squad. Um. I think. Because oh. well, I, I gotta think. I think when you think of the ones that. We haven't seen put on screen mm. at all. So uh, Two Face Riddler. We're kind of running out of them. I feel like. Well, you got, I mean, yeah, you got more of the B villains now. But, uh, Penguin. It's been a while since Penguin's been on screen. Well, actually, Penguin would be a good one because Danny DeVito's Penguin was like more of a Tim Burton esque, well, Tim Burton director. But yeah. you know what I mean, now. Yeah, yeah, I like to see the more of the gangster side of the yeah. Penguin. I um, kind of like the Arkham version, was like Cockney. Yeah, I'd like to see that come yeah. through. Even though the animated version where it's like a lot more sophisticated. But he's still like this disgusting freak. Well, it's see Riddler as well, but don't probably mm. this time. Riddler would be good as well. I Excellent. really would like to see Scarface. That'd be good. Uh, I, I, I really like Scarface as a villain. He's not a main villain. He's more of a, a side villain. Yeah. But there's something so creepy about him. Well, obviously, because he's a dummy. Yeah. It's just so I think it's just uh, you know the whole the ventriloquist and that Scarface is just I think it's great. It's it's really creepy, but I don't know if it work mm. in this universe. I'm not sure if you could carry a film. Is the problem? No, he, he won't. You know, he yeah. has to be more of the like you know like kind uh, of like how Rhino was done in an Amazing Spider-Man Two, where he's like more of a side thing. Hmm. Maybe like it was like the, the opening scene. Or something. Yeah. If they like did something along the lines of the Arkham Asylum games. Mm. Because the original plan was to have, like, as many Batman villains as possible. Having the Arkham uh, Asylum be the setting could easily work for that. Well, I've there was room at one point where you've seen, you know, the raid, haven't you? I uh, heard of it. What? I haven't got around to seeing it yet. It looks freaking what? awesome. It is awesome. Um, well, you, you've seen Dread, then, haven't you? Yes. Okay, imagine well, that. Dread... But in Arkham Island. I would love that. So he has to get somewhere. He's got to fight all these other villains. Not low. Not, not I mean, you know, be more like, you know, um, patient. Who are the crazy ones? Yeah, crazy ones. Yeah. But, I mean... Put him, like, in... Like, the... the Just a situation where, like, it pushes into his limits. Because, I mean, I don't know what's going on. The future of Batman worries me slightly. Because hmm. you've got to have Batman and Joker together. And Jared Leto's Joker, um, I just. <sighs> well, you don't I like Jared Leto, do you? I don't. Well, no, no, well, I don't like him more now because after what happened Suicide Squad, this whole yeah, I was so in character. I gave Margot Robbie a dead rat. I'm thinking. Yeah, it's like we get it. You were in character. I mean, it, I just felt like he was like he he wanted to show everyone. Oh yeah, I'm so dedicated to this role. I mean, you don't need to. Being character or how to play a Joker. I mean, look at Jack Nicholson. He, there's different. Jack Nicholson looks like he's having fun. Jared Leto thinks like he looks like he's trying way too hard to show how convincing he is. <laughs> the Joker. I'm gonna reserve treatment to, uh, judgment until I actually see him as a character because I really <laughs> didn't feel like he was in Suicide Squad enough well, for me no, to make a judgment. Though- you know. <laughs> But yeah, but when he was telling the press about it, he made out like he was one of the main characters. Mm. I thought... But the, the marketing sure as hell tried to make it look like he was. 
<laughs> well, no, no, the thing is, like, if you watch the trailers, it makes out they're taking on the Joker. Mm. There's one bit. I where thought you, that was the plot. There, there's one bit you, in trailer where you go, ah, 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 ah. And, like, you know, um, Harley Quinn goes, uh oh. It makes out that they're going to, yeah, yeah you no, know, he's going to come in. That would have been a fan. He would have been a fantastic villain for him, especially but, with Harley there. But I don't think they wanted to, you know. Yeah. At uh, the same time, it felt like a relationship from her point of view. So, if Joker was there, it, she would have been like a lot more in the spotlight and a, a bigger focus on that. Uh, I don't think there would have been as much room for the other characters. There wasn't enough room for anyway. Some of them you don't know about still yet. Um, can, I, can I suggest we after this we watch uh, the Sarge Panic Suicide Squad? I'd love that. I want. I want. To, I want to see what. I would want to watch yeah. it with you because yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, going back to Batman, I think there is a perfect opportunity to introduce Tim Drake here. There could be the third Robin, yes, because he was kind of like came in because to try and be a more positive influence on uh, the Batman after you know the whole thing with Jason Todd. Mm. Also, I'm apparently, not sure about this this Batman though with a sidekick, I don't know. Well. I honestly, I've never been a fan of Robin until I started like getting into the Teen Titan stuff, hmm. and I'm starting to see like the potential for the character a lot more. There we go. Especially Tim Drake from a character perspective, that he is that calming influence, and it kind of feels like Batman needs that, especially this Batman, who's a much more aggressive and darker character. It feels like it would work from a character perspective. Yeah, we go. I don't know uh, if they should make him like super young though, because Tim Drake's always been in like shown as being like a little kid. I don't it's know if that would work as much. Was he a teenage then, or like in twenties? Maybe teenage. But I did hear that potentially they're making a Titans film. Are they as well? Mm. Oh, okay. I want to see that, especially since we already have Cyborg. Yeah, yeah, cause yeah. I will can be. Uh, uh, well, I can say as well, like uh, going back to uh, Batman vs Superman. One thing I didn't really like was the clips for each Justice League character. Ah, oh, that was so stupid. Yeah, I think they would have worked better with. Um, it seems I, I, like I, it should have been viral marketing. I, 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 and I'm saying this, yeah, like like say you know hidden on the website somewhere. Yeah, that would been cool. That would be a great way to advertise it. People like, on Facebook go, oh, go on this and find out, you know, and then yeah. see this video. It could have been just like a video marketed as a Daily Planet re uh, report. Something like that. Mm. And like it's got like um, mysterious blur stops a shoplifter. You know that scene where the Flash is um, stopping the guy? Oh, yes, that scene. There we go. <laughs> I think it was kind of interesting. I don't know if this would work as much. Where we see... So it looks like in the trailer for Justice League that Cyborg turns into Iron Man for a few <laughs> scenes. <laughs> where he's got like the helmet on and he's flying. Uh, so about Cyborg flying feels kind of off. Uh, I got the Justice League trailer. I don't know about you, but does the CGI for Cyborg look a bit off in some scenes? There's always on a field, I think, mm. in the stadium, and it looks... CGI is not look good. Ooh. Yeah, some of them looks a little bit too busy. Mm -hmm. anyway, I'm glad that they're like in, um, introducing him as a character. Though, personally, I would have saved him for Titans and used like maybe John Stewart's Green Lantern. Yeah, Green Lantern actually. That's something I'm looking forward to because uh, is it going to be Lantern Corpse? Have you? I hope so. That'd be cool. That could be something different. Because hmm. I, I think I think yeah, they, don't, they shouldn't focus on Howard Jordan. I know he's seen as the Green Lantern, but. I think he's he's not as good because he's not as a creative. He's not imaginative. Because the second Green Lantern wasn't he meant to be like a comic book illustrator or something. Uh, he was a painter, I think. He was yeah, like uh, to, to make it more Kyle Rayner. Uh, to make it more politically correct. But yeah, it, they got to see what I mean now because they choose they got someone now who's got more of an imagination. Because hmm. Hal Jordan, all I can remember him doing was a fist, <laughs> and that's it. They made fun of that in a Batman comic, but um. The like the storyline where they introduced Kyle Rayner was where um, Hal Jordan went nuts and killed the Green Lanterns. Sinestro. 
and Don't stole. Sinestro, no, um, oh, was no, he was overtaken by Parallax. Parallax, not Sinestro, yeah. Uh, I think Sinestro was like later when he became a villain, but this was Hal Jordan going nuts, and the fans went nuts over this. What if we had the Ryan Reynolds one, and have him as a villain? I would see that. Ryan Reynolds would be good as him. Um, what well, thing is like because uh, that well, that's an interesting backstory that is. Because well, yeah. because you got yeah he goes and he. He get becomes villain first, but then the writer saved by saying no, he was possessed by Parallax. Mm. Uh, but there's also a comic called Bru- Green Lantern Rebirth. Have you ever read that? I've heard it's, it's somewhere. It, the Rebirth's the new series, right? Isn't the Rebirth the initiative the current reboot? Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's still. Uh, the, I, think, the reboot. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's a reboot, but I don't know if it's a current reboot. It was, it was made. It was. It came out quite a few years back. Yeah, it might not be the current one then. Yeah. But um, basically, they fixed, well, they fixed as best they could the you know, the, the uh, Parallax storyline. Mm. And it was seeing how Jordan come back as the Green Lantern. Yeah. And they went in so much detail, like why some of his hair was white. And it was quite a good read, actually. And, um, you know, so he comes back at the end as, as a Green Lantern. And it's funny because all the other, the other Green Lanterns, as well as the uh, corpse, all coming together to defeat Parallax. Mm. And, uh, yeah. You know, it's good because it was good because there's a whole section where how Jordan's trying to fight with Parallax in his head. Playing out, I thought, yeah, I thought in the end, I mean, I mean, that it was shocking where he decides to kill everyone. Uh, you know, must be, you know, it was because it happened in the 90s. But I think they managed to fix it pretty well. But then it went really strange with Green Lantern because they mm. brought in all these other colours. Like know, green, the Spectrum. Yeah, the Spectrum, yeah. Because, uh, you know, their green was willpower, yellow was fear. Pink was love, all these all sorts of things, and so that expanded the universe. Green Lantern, because I think the Green Lantern deserves its own franchise completely, mm. not just in the DC, but its own because there's so much you can do. I mean, like, well, the thing about Gal- 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 Galaxy, you got the Nova Corps. Mm. That's what they, the, the Green, they're basically the same as the Green, the Green Lantern Corps. <laughs> it's like Space Police. They, they are the Space Police. That's it. Yeah, I just like. Bring about Ryan Reynolds again, and talk about like using the ori- the original Batman series. I don't like the idea of like throwing away a series because like it didn't do well, stuff like that. Because otherwise you're just telling the same story again. There you go. Like with Spider Man, for example. Like they could have used like the Amazing Spider Man version of that character. Yeah, rather than like rebooting it again, just so they didn't have to do an origin story. Though it feels like they've gotten around that pretty well. It, yeah. It's something you were saying recently, a video that we have made today, in fact, that you don't like the idea of origins. Uh, I'm just feel like these older films could be a way of getting around that. So uh, maybe not bringing Andrew Garfield into the new one, do you mean? But I understand why Tom Holland was chosen because they wanted a Spider-Man to grow up. Mm. And so far I'm digging him. I'm really interested to see where he goes. But I'm talking more like, oh, in terms of um, Green Lantern. Because like, that Green Lantern film came out, didn't do well. Finally got around to seeing it. Kind of boring. No. But, no. It kind of feels like you don't need to completely disregard something when something good can be made of it. You know, I don't think Howard Jordan will cast so. Mm. I don't think he he should not have been playing Howard Jordan in the first place. Yeah. I didn't mean like, like you said, as it would be good as a launching point for Kyle Rayner. There you go. It means that you don't have to like have this whole origin story of how he gets the ring again. Even with Batman, they had to do that where he had him in the middle of his career. I don't think they could do like another Dark uh, Batman Begins again. Yeah, well, the thing, the thing about Batman Begins was that at the time we didn't have as many origin stories, but also we had not really seen that origin story of Batman before. Mm. They mentioned it in Batman, Tim Burton's Batman, don't they? But yeah. We don't actually see. We don't actually see him becoming the Batman. He already is Batman in the other installments, yeah. so that was fresh to see. But but at the yeah. same time, it's like. We've seen origin stories over and over again. Mm. There we go. But if you introduce them in the middle of the career, a lot of times 
uh, it can feel like you're missing part of the story. Mm. Like, the Batman vs. Superman, it felt like there was a big part of the story missing. And it was, again, part of that big race to catch up to Marvel as fast as possible. Have you, question by the way, have you watched the, uh, the extended version of Batman vs. Superman? I own it. I haven't watched it yet. It's a slight improvement. Uh, I will say, I love the fact that the character on the front of the box is Wonder Woman. <laughs> Batman vs. Superman. <coughs> Wonder Woman is front and centre. <coughs> I know, she's right, right in the middle, isn't it? Well, I know she what was. Is. Mm. So what about that theme song of Wonder Woman that gives us me chills as well? Yeah, it's great. I think Hans Zimmer did a really good theme tune there. Really yeah, somebody you can like associate with the character as well. Though I don't feel like they have like that many great themes anymore. And uh, I just I, I don't feel like they have like the equivalent of the Superman theme or the um, uh, Tim Burton Batman film theme. Maybe Avengers. Mm, yeah, is that what, yeah, the Avengers are good, I guess. Yeah. I feel like the last big one that like stuck out to me was Spider Man. You know yeah, the, the, um, the Danny Elfman one. The Danny Elfman one. Yeah, that, that was, was a fantastic really theme. <laughs> I cannot for the life of me find this fucking coin. How much longer have we got? What? How much longer have we got? Because I'm just buying time at this point. Oh, uh, we've uh, not long at all. <laughs> no, we should probably wrap it up. Yeah, okay. So, if you were to fix the DC. Cinematic universe. What would you do? And so far, the DC films. Uh, how would well? What would you rank? How would you rank them? What would you rank them in? And there's not mm. many films, but yeah, because they they all they all haven't been fantastic so far. Yeah. So it'd be more interesting to see which one do you what would you put in order from best to worst. I feel like I like part, some parts of them more than others. So it's kind of hard for me to think of like an overall experience because like I feel like Suicide Squad was probably the best in terms of its overall structure, but there was more parts that I liked in Batman vs Superman and Man of Steel, even though they were very flawed films. I gotta say I preferred Man of Steel. I thought it had a stronger structure mm. and it had more focus. Uh, it was more focused film. Yeah, for most of it before it came to the big crash bang wall up at the end. I do love me a good Crash Bang while well, They fight in space. Bugger me, bugger me, bugger me. I think, like... I feel like what they should do is focus on lighting up a bit. You know, kind of what they did with um, Suicide Squad. But still have that kind of dark edge to it. Look at they're doing that. Look at just a sleek trailer. Now, this could be just the power of, you know, mm. how to edit a trailer. But there are some humorous scenes in it. It kind of feels like it's gonna seem kind of. It kind of feels like the character of Batman in Batman vs Superman, where he's very serious and dark, but at the end there's kind of like a ray of light, you know, that Superman's death did lead to something. They could say he had like a positive influence on him. Potentially Wonder Woman as well. You kind of tell could get a glimpse there was something there. There we go. But it kind of feels like there should be a light at the end of this dark tunnel. And maybe embracing some of the goofier side of the DC Universe can help with it. Like with the, uh, the Green Lanterns and mm. stuff. Potentially Blue Beetle. There's a lot of potential there. I see the Green Lantern because I know Batman hates Green Lantern. So we're going to see go. some interaction between them. I just hope they don't like keep all their good ideas for the TV series. I don't think they're doing that at the moment. Because mm. I would say Booster Gold, maybe, but that seems more like a TV series. There we go. Very fl kind of bright and flamboyant character from the future. Yeah. But definitely a Teen Titans film could work. And that's got a huge fan base as well. Well, with the animated series, and the tr they seem to be trying to revive that with the Go show. Have you seen that? No. It's like a more comedic take. 
uh, which is either all right or the worst thing ever created, depending on who you ask. I think it's just okay. There we go. Worst comes to worst, do Crisis on Infinite Earths and reboot everything. I think it's like, all well, one normal I think is now like, the moment where DCS proved where they can do something. But yeah. how, have you heard how long the running time is Wonder Woman? Hmm? Almost three hours. Three hours? Yeah, I think that is a long time. Well, I guess if you want to have like both the war and Themyscira and kind of flesh them out. Mm, yeah, but still you could come hmm. in two hours thing. I don't think three hours is... I think some people seem to think that if you if your film like how if your film's like oh three hours that means it's gonna be epic and all that you know, it's how many three hours is it's a long running time and it's a long time to keep always focus on the character. Don't know, then again it does work for some films, and I mean look at all the rings films. Hmm. That works for Christopher Nolan. I'm, yeah, I'm Those films three hours they feel like they last just they are quite forever. long, but they're not three hours or something. Interstellar was about just under three hours. No oh, yeah. Dark Knight Rises, how long was that? That was quite long, but I don't think it, I think it was three hours. It was like two movies. It did feel like two movies, didn't it? Still good though. Oh yeah. There we go. So I think we've uh, pretty much fixed the DC cinematic universe at this point. Yeah, uh, you're welcome, Warner Brothers. We have a lot of ideas. We hope you'll take us up on these. And. Maybe don't just focus on Batman. You have other characters you can play with. Maybe give them their own solo films. Though, I feel like... Yeah, if Wonder Woman doesn't do well, it might end at um, Justice League. Yeah. That could be a good way to end it, yeah. though, I guess. Yeah. I mean, like, that would be, like, a solid five films, maybe. Hmm. That some people have said that, like... You know, they're not as bad as people say. Maybe that could be that current in iteration of Legacy in a couple of years. When superhero films are like, died down a bit, they could come back. When are superhero films going to die down now? Because, think about it, I mean, it's nearly been 10 years since the first Iron Man. It's nearly 10 years, isn't it? Is it 10 years this year? No, next year. Ooh. That's insane, though, isn't it? Just... Yeah, I think it should end after Infinity Wars for Marvel. Uh, well, the thing is that Marvel is its own studio now, yeah. so it needs to keep going, otherwise. Uh, that's a good point. So, they do have a lot to work off. Well, I mean, I think what you do is do the Infinity War, and then focus on standalone films. Mm. Because, I mean, I think that's quite a big achievement, what they've done. I mean, think about it, like, ten years building up this big war. Mm. Uh, but I think after that, I think, think, I think they should just focus on smaller films. Their characters that no one's heard of, but because it's got Marvel on it, people will go see it. Yeah. Problem is though, people like the whole vibe of seeing in after the credits to see what happens next. So I, think, I wonder if they're going to lose mm. a bit if they do sound loan films, not leading something else. Unless, yeah. oh, actually. Uh, Are you thinking I, what I'm thinking? Probably not, but go on. Uh, you go first. Uh, okay, with Guardians Galaxy, um, there's a there's a story that they're involved in called War of Kings. Now it's uh, it's a big event event in the in this cosmic universe of Marvel, um, which they could potentially put into a few films leading it up because Adam Warlock plays a big part of it as well. Problem is, uh, you've got. Scrolls uh, involved in that, and they're owned by Fox. So oh, they owned by Fox. Scrolls are. Okay. <sighs> that was my idea. I oh. was gonna say drop hints towards Secret Invasion. Yeah, yeah. Well, Secret Invasion happens in Guardians of the Galaxy as well, and yeah, Fox owned because they're part of the Fantastic Four. Uh, yeah, I knew they owned Galactus. They own Galactus as well. They own Galactus. They own Doom. They own the. They own the best villains. Next, actually, you know, next time if we ever do these, talk about it. You have to watch Fan Four Stick so we can talk about it properly. You can finally watch that. We were talking about that in the first podcast thing we ever made. We did. I, I went to see it, didn't I? Just... Yeah, I, I remember so... Lara said she liked it. What? There we go. I have serious words of her. <laughs> I think no, the thing is, though, the thing with Fan Four Stick is there are some interesting ideas. 
like there's one scene you probably saw it in the nostalgia period review where like um reed wakes up and his arms his, his it's legs like it's just like out. a horror film yeah and i think that i know it's not a typical superhero film, but i like the fact that they're discovering their powers in this way it's something that would happen in reality if mm. the government found out they'd be testing you wouldn't they and I thought I liked the part of it then just turn into a, a typical superhero film and Doom I'm sorry but never, never, oh, they, I remember they said he was going to be a blogger <laughs> they changed that you could just say it's a Doom butt what? The, just a Doom butt for the real Doom that's what they always do if Doom dies or a plan goes wrong it's a Doom butt it's the real Doom we finally have real Doom I want them to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe just I think it should be awesome. I want to see Secret Wars. Anyone else being on this? Do you want to see Secret Wars? Do you want to see Secret Wars? Uh, that was the one where they all got warped to a planet to fight an army of villains. And Doctor Doom is a huge part of that. I'm just excited for the fact that they didn't put up uh, some of Planet Hulk. Mm. That's a shame because, like, Universal... Why are they keeping the right to those? Oh, I don't know. They can. Do they own Sheen Hulk as well? I think so. Could we just be happy? Could we just always be happy Jeff Goldblum's in a Marvel film now? I'm very happy about this. I saw the fact... <laughs> I'm loving that. The trailer. Just like, yeah, his voice. It was, it's main event time. <laughs> and now... I give you... Your... Incredible... Hulk. He just does it in such a Jeff Colm voice. Like, how can you not love that? <laughs> that that that's chaos. That's chaos theory. I hope he's in more than one film. <laughs> did you spot him at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy? By the way, I don't think I did. Yeah, he's dancing in the in the credits. Ooh, I go. That oh god, this I think I'm awesome. confused with the collector, Jeff Goldblum. I thought you were joking about that. We told him clearly. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. well, they are brothers. The Collector and uh, Grandmaster. Goldblum's character. Yeah, Grandmaster there, brothers. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. That makes kind of sense now. Why? I thought they looked kind of similar. I mean, uh, so one of them loves collecting things, one of them likes people to fight each other. Hmm. So, yeah, it's like saying they kind of got to keep the Marvel Studio going, but at the very least, they're experimenting. Well, every film's different to each other, I think. Mm. It's like, it kind of feels like he's got to the point where the, they can't just make a straight-up superhero film anymore. It has to be some kind of gimmick. Mm. Like, Doctor Strange was very supernatural. Iron Man was a heist movie. Mm. Guardians of the Galaxy is a space opera. Uh, Slash the, a musical. Well, you know, the first three, you know, the first yeah. cap, you know, all three Captain America films, though, they're the ones where each one of them feels different to each other. Yeah, first yeah. one the first is... first one's a war film. It's a war film. Second one's like a political thriller in a way, mm. isn't it? Like, um, a third one, it's more like a war film, isn't it? Or, or no, not a war film, but how to put it? Because he goes rogue, doesn't he? In the, like, I mean, yeah. Well, that one felt more like a superhero film. That was, but it was like a superhero fight film. That was the so real. It was different. It was a real Avengers two. <laughs> no, you. Hmm? Shouldn't that have been Avengers three? It was a real Avengers 2. I mean, Age of Ultron, I felt like nothing really happened. And it was still great, but don't get me wrong, but I felt that it wasn't leading to anywhere. But then again, the first one didn't either, really. It, it was hmm. just a bit like, you follow this three's film, here's your payoff, you know. There we go. I just kind of felt like... I don't know. I can't, I can't really... I don't, I don't really agree with you, but I can't really... <laughs> you can't really argue with that logic either. Because I can't really think of anything it was really leading to. It's like... I, I mean, it set up a few things. Like, the Hulk for Planet Hulk. Because he disappears in, doesn't mm. he? Ultron was a great film. Yeah, I liked Ultron. Something about that, like... Because we've seen so many AI characters. This one yes. felt like a person. But you people... Like, when... um. Quicksilver and Scott Witchley just like guys wait where are you going well you only know, start singing uh, they got no strings on me hmm now I heard some people saying oh my god well he starts singing a Disney song I thought no it's the whole irony behind it and the whole just I know it was like 
But the fact that it's creepy as fuck. It is creepy, the fact he's singing that, yeah. I don't think the snake is climbing. I don't think I'm supposed to be here. This is like a good place to end it with me right. about to jump to my death. Thank you for joining me, Chris. Thank you. Thank we you. fixed the DC Cinematic Universe. We talked about superhero films as a whole. So what should we talk about next week? Next time, even. Well, next time, I'm probably going to be talking with Amish again. Mm -hmm. Unless I can get somebody else to join me. We'll just have to see what's in the news. Hey, next time we join up, maybe we'll have a new Prime Minister. You never know. Maybe Trump might leave. Oh my god, I would so love to talk about Trump on this. Careful, we don't want to be labelled as SJWs because we dare to argue about Sifiora! <laughs>